Frontline Updates, where we delve deep into military strategies and updates from conflict zones. Today, we're discussing the progress of the ongoing special military operation as of July 27, 2024. I'm your host, Sharifa Muhammad, MGT. I'm Colonel A.C. Ogintoy, an infantry officer. Substantial Ukrainian losses, the briefing details considerable losses for Ukrainian forces, including the destruction of armored combat vehicles, artillery systems like the U.S.-made M777 howitzer, and various Soviet-era artillery. Electronic warfare equipment and counterbattery radars were also targeted and destroyed. Welcome to today's episode of Frontline Updates podcast, where we provide insights into global military developments. Joining us is Colonel A.C. Ogantoye, here to discuss the latest updates on the special military operation as of July 27, 2024. Colonel, welcome to the show. Let's dive right in. Can you summarize the activities of the North Group of Troops for us? Yes. In the North, our forces have been actively engaged around Lipsy, Tycho, and other areas in the Kharkov region. We've successfully defeated several Ukrainian brigades, including the 42nd Mechanized and 92nd Assault Brigades. Importantly, we repelled two counterattacks by the 92nd Assault and 57th Motorized Infantry Brigades, inflicting substantial losses, including the capture of a US-made M777 howitzer and several D-30 howitzers. That sounds like a significant engagement. Moving to the West, what updates can you provide there? The West group of troops has also seen considerable success. They've improved their tactical positions and defeated multiple Ukrainian formations around Sinkovka and Krasny Lyman. Key victories included repelling an assault by the 241st Terrestrial Defense Brigade and destroying a range of enemy equipment, including AM-198 howitzer and a Gvozdika self-propelled artillery mount. How about the Southern group of troops? What has been their progress? The Southern Group has taken more advantageous lines and defeated forces in several key areas like Chesov Yar and Krasnogorovka. Their operations resulted in the destruction of a considerable number of enemy vehicles and artillery pieces, significantly degrading the enemy's operational capabilities in the region. Could you elaborate on the activities of the Center Group of Troops? In the center, our troops have liberated Lozovatskoy and effectively engaged multiple Ukrainian brigades across a broad area. This includes significant battles in Toritsk and Novgorodskoy, where we repelled multiple enemy counterattacks. Our forces captured several key pieces of artillery and inflicted heavy personnel losses. Shifting focus to the Vostok Group, what can you tell us about their operations? The Vostok Group has improved their tactical situation along the front line, particularly in areas like Neskutchnoi and Vermevka. They've been successful in defeating the manpower and equipment of the 123rd and 129th Terrestrial Defense Brigades, capturing a number of critical artillery assets. With such extensive operations, how have your air defense systems performed? Our air defenses have been highly effective, shooting down 10 MRS missiles and a significant number of UAVs, including those operating outside the Special Operations Zone. This has been crucial in maintaining the security of our forces and minimizing the impact of enemy air capabilities. Lastly, Colonel, what's the strategic outlook for the coming days? We will continue to use our advantages to further weaken the enemy's ability to fight while also securing more strategic positions. In the village of Sotnitsky, Cossack artillery from the northern forces targeted a large concentration of Ukrainian armed forces infantry personnel who were hiding in houses. The surviving Ukrainian armed forces militants fled from the village. Additionally, 17 servicemen from the 35th Separate Marine Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces voluntarily surrendered on islands in the Dnieper River Delta in the Kherson region. Our objective is to maintain our momentum and achieve a favorable outcome that strengthens our security and regional stability. Colonel, thank you for providing such a detailed briefing on the current military situation. Your insights are invaluable to our understanding of the conflict's dynamics. And thank you to our listeners for tuning in. Join us next time as we continue to provide up-to-date coverage on global military affairs. Stay with us for more updates and expert analyses on global defense and security issues. Stay informed. Stay secure. Thank you for the opportunity to share these updates.
it's important for the public to understand the realities on the ground. Additionally, at least 30 people, including children, have been killed and many wounded after an Israeli air attack hit a school housing injured and displaced Palestinians in Deir el Bala in central Gaza. The UN's humanitarian aid agency reports that hundreds of Palestinians remain trapped in eastern Khan Yunus amid intense hostilities. Rescue teams are unable to reach them due to the denial of access by the Israeli military.